Let's take a look at some of the different ways you can make geometric shapes in Corel Painter. First of all, the most obvious way is to just go ahead and paint your squares and your rectangles manually by hand, and that might feel a little more traditional. Or if you want to leverage the digital art tools a little bit more, you can take advantage of those. So there are some brushes, like the palette knives especially, that do a really quick and easy job of making geometric shapes because they're flat in nature. And so you can really quickly get all of these different shapes and still get kind of a hand-painted look while you're painting. Other brushes, like the scratchboard tool for instance, are more circular, and you can use those to get circles, like so. You can also use the shape tools. There's the rectangular shape that will let you draw different shapes. If you tap and hold on that same tool, you can also get the elliptical shape tool, and you can make ellipses or ovals, and you can make circles. If you hold down shift, you'll get a perfect circle. Same goes for the rectangular shape tool. If you want a perfect square, just hold down shift. If you want to change the color of these, you can do that in these two options up here, which let you add a stroke or an outline and a fill, or you can simply draw the shape and then double click next to it here in the layers palette and that'll bring up the shape attributes and you can change the color that way. You can click here on the fill swatch. I can choose red or I could choose blue. I can even hunt around to try to find the exact color that I want. If I want there to be a stroke around it, I can add a stroke and I can change the color of that stroke as well if I want that to be blue or red or whatever. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. As you're working on the painting, you could go through each individual piece and make changes to it like this and all of your different layers would be separate and so you can take them and move them around and rearrange them as you're working. Now one thing to point out here is that when you're creating shapes using the shape tools, you're getting these vector shape layers. And if you wanted to just flatten these down to a single layer, what you'd do is just select them all holding shift and then you can hit control E or go to collapse layers. That's gonna commit them to just a regular layer as if they were regular paint. And that'll let you go in here and blend them and paint on them and so on. If I don't merge them down or commit them to a shape layer, if I try to blend that rectangle with the stroke around it, nothing's happening because it's a shape layer. You have to right click on those layers, choose convert to default layer, select all those layers together and merge them with control E and then you can blend. So you might ask, what's the advantage to keeping them as vector layers then? Well, as long as they're vector layers, you can go in here with the white arrow tool, the shape selection tool, and you can select different corners. And if you wanted to adjust this and make it a different shape, you could do that very easily. And so as long as you want each of those shapes to be editable in that way, you would want to keep them as vector layers. Otherwise, if you want to be able to treat them like paint or anything else on your canvas, go ahead and merge them down. If you're not worried about keeping your background separate, you could also just go to layers, drop all, and that'll fuse all those layers down with the canvas layer as well. If you want to be able to draw custom shapes, you can use the pen tool and you can tap and make points to draw polygons like so, or if you tap and you hold, you can make curves like this. And just like with the rectangle and the ellipses, you can go to the shape selection tool and you can control the curve with these little handles here, and you can move each point around however you like to make your custom shapes. And again, these are vector shapes, so you can double click on them, you can remove the stroke, you can add a fill, and you have all that customization over your shapes. If you want to be able to blend it, Again, right click on it, convert it to a default layer or merge it down. Then you can select your blender and you can blend. You can also make geometric shapes using selections. For example, I could use the rectangular selection tool to draw a selection. If I hold shift, I can continue to add to that selection. And so I can build this up into a more complex selection like so. Or if I wanna subtract from it, I can hold alt and I can chip away at that selection to make holes in it. Now, if I create a new layer and I go to edit fill, I can fill that shape and now I have a nice complex shape. I can do control D to deselect that shape. And now I can take that and move it around. I could create another layer beneath that and repeat that process. Let's say this time with the elliptical selection tool. Now I have all these different really complex shapes that I can work with. Now these are not vector layers, so you could just go in and start blending these if you want to. However, if you wanted to take a complex shape like this and make it into a vector, you can do that. What you want to do is you want to right click on that layer, choose select layer content to put a selection around that. Then you want to go to select, convert to shape. That converts it to a vector shape and puts that shape on its own layer. And I can go in here, double click on that shape and I can change the color to any color I like. I can also choose my white arrow tool and I can select nodes and reshape that image. Now you'll notice it did kind of a sloppy job when it converted it. So if that's not the kind of look you want, just watch out for that. 
There's also the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool, which also let you draw polygonal shapes like so. And you can, of course, fill those. Another option is to use straight line drawing mode. I'm going to select the scratchboard tool here. I'll select a black. I'll switch to straight line drawing mode up here by clicking on this little toggle when the brush is selected. Or I can hit V to switch to straight line drawing mode and B to switch back to freeform. So right now this is freeform. I can draw any kind of curve or angle I want. But if I hit V, then I'm tapping and I'm making points very similar to that pen tool that I was using earlier. Now if I want to end this segment, I have to hit B on my keyboard to break that line segment. Otherwise I'll continue adding segments. Now I can draw freeform or I can start a new line segment by hitting V again. So as long as V is selected, I'm going to keep making segments. B to break the line segment, back to V, start a new segment. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to freeform drawing mode. And the method that we'll look at uses perspective guides. I'm going to turn on perspective guides here, make sure they're on with the on button. I also want to make sure that perspective guided strokes is turned on here. And then finally, I'm going to choose the two point general composition, but you could try any of these other options here. This is going to give me two vanishing points, one on the left and one on the right. I'm going to switch back to my brush tool with B. I'm going to go ahead and just use the smooth scratch board for this. And if I draw while perspective guided strokes is turned on, I'm not going to be able to draw in any other angle other than the ones that are going towards this vanishing point here. So as you can see, my strokes are locked into perspective. Now I can hold shift and I can break that temporarily as long as I'm holding shift and I can draw freeform. If I let go of shift, it's locking it back in. Now I have a couple of custom keyboard shortcuts here, which come pre-installed with my workspace. If I hit shift and P, then that's going to turn off perspective guided strokes as if I clicked up here to turn it on and off. So that's just my shortcut for that. Shift P turns it back on. And then I can also hit just P on my keyboard to toggle the visibility of these guides in the background. You can see there's a few different modes showing the different guides. So I might not want them visible while I'm painting, and in that case I can just hide them while still keeping perspective guided strokes active to help me draw these geometric lines and shapes. Another option is to use image hose nozzles. You could paint a bunch of abstract shapes, turn them into an image hose nozzle, and then just paint with that brush. You'll of course need to select an image hose brush to paint with. I'm going to turn off perspective guided strokes and paint with this brush. And you can see this brush is just kind of a stamp brush that has a bunch of different colored strips. And I can paint with it using pen pressure as if it's a brush. So you can really go ahead and make all your geometric shapes first if you wanted to, turn them into a brush, and then make a painting like this. Here's another example of a brush that creates primitive shapes. And if I layer them up like this, you can see I get this nice pattern. And then if I wanted to go through here, and use the paint bucket to fill in some of these, I could do that. So that's a variety of ways you can use to create shapes in your abstract paintings. Now it's time to go ahead and move on to the first assignment painting.